Hey everyone, the name is Eric Dorn. Today we will be debunking the 16 personalities. So I can't believe nobody has done this before. The way I see it, 16 personalities has basically hijacked the conversational personality types and created some really unhealthy ideas about what a personality type is or how personality psychology works. Now, I want to argue that what 16personalities.com does is not based on any science. It is only a kind of misrepresentation of Carl Jung's works, and it is really not based on Carl Jung at all. We have been misled, we have been duped by this website, and a lot of us have been tricked. Now, the 16 personalities website is really visually stunning. It's really impressive in how it is made. And the most impressive thing is it's offered to people completely for free. You get the personality test, you get an in-depth personality description, you get information about your personality type, all handed to you for free. And there is no advertisement, so it's just pure content, pure insight, pure discovery into yourself. So perhaps the most likely reason why this website has been able to grow is the fact it is offering a service for free. It is offering people something without any demands back, just giving you a gift, the gift of self-insight. But the problem when you start digging under the surface is why is it free? What are they doing? Who is behind the project and for what purpose? The interesting thing about 16 personalities is it has no known front figure. Nobody to go out and say, I created this website and this is why I did it. We're just left with the work itself. We are all promoting, sharing and taking this test. So it's been taken by millions of people across the world. It is probably the most taken personal test across the globe today. Now. What's interesting about this test is it's not an MBTI test at all. In fact, it has nothing to do with MBTI. The questions that you take on the 16 personalities test has nothing to do with the questions that you're asked in a normal MBTI test. While most MBTI tests are focused on understanding your values, your identity, your beliefs, your feelings, your emotional states, the 16 personalities test is focused on something a lot more simplistic, and that is your immediate behavior in a situation. So the 16 personalities will ask you questions about how you act in different situations, how outgoing you are, how likely you are to take initiative in a conversation. These are the superficial metrics that 16 personalities will use to group you into a specific personality type. That means they will try to tell you who you are based on some quick things that you, you do in groups, based on who you are at work, based on the things that you tend to do at the moment. So 16 personalities confuses identity with behavior. And this is a very, this, uh, very uncomfortable association. The problem with this association is behavior cannot be categorized in this manner. You cannot group and take people's behavior and lose actions in a specific situation and then use that to give people a sense of identity. You cannot tell people who they are just because they do something at one specific time or at one specific situation. Our actions, our behavior are much more shaped by our environment, by our workplace expectations, by our parents' expectations, by our friends' expectations, than by who we are. That means we are sold a personality type based on how we act or how we behave at the moment, disregarding the fact that we could be somebody completely different. We might enjoy being somebody else. We might prefer to act differently. We might have different intentions, different values associated with these behaviors. And that means what they are saying about the personality types is based on generalization, simplification, by shallow misrepresentation of the MBTI. 16personalities.com is not an MBTI test. It's a big five test. It's the same big five test that is used by Cambridge Analytica, this project from a few years back that stole people's data and used it, sold it to companies to create personalized advertisements. What 
16 personalities test that is so interesting is it takes big five dimensions like outgoingness, openness, agreeableness, and then it rebrands it and says, oh, outgoingness, that's extroversion. Openness, that's intuition. Agreeableness, that's feeling. And it does these things almost completely unnoticed. It's so obvious that this is what they are doing, but almost nobody has claim this to be a misconception. Nobody has gone out and said, wait a second, this just shouldn't happen. This shouldn't be, <laughs> this shouldn't, this, uh, this cannot work that way. Because it can't. Thinking is not the same as being disagreeable. Feeling is not the same as being agreeable. You cannot take Carl Jung's concepts of introversion, which talk about what introversion is, and then try to say, okay, all introverts are shy. All introverts are reserved. You can't do that. You can't make that association because that's not something Carl Jung ever claimed to be the truth. When understanding personality, you have to be very careful with what content you read online because there is a lot of content out there online that is just limiting. 16 personalities is not soul food. It is the McDonald's of the personality psychology. It is fast food for finding a quick sense of identity based on shallow stereotypes. And when people are going on promoting their sense of identity based on McDonald's, based on fast food, based on these loose quick conclusions, they are also limiting themselves and other people. The way it's applied today, the way they use this theory today to say, oh, you are that type, so that's why you do this, is inherently damaging to interpersonal relationships and connection. It promotes a culture of misunderstanding because when you are labeling people just based on their behavior and when you're not listening to them, when you're not hearing their intentions, their values, their feelings, their associations, their goals behind their actions, you are misrepresenting people. When you are labeling people based on your first glance experience with them, you are misunderstanding how they act and why they do the things they do. We cannot prove a connection between behavior and personality. And that's why the big five has never worked with personality types. And that's why it never should. The big five is an interesting personality system. Behavior is an interesting dimension, but behavior does not correlate to personality. You cannot take the big five and then give people a sense of identity based on its results, because its results are only meant to give you a snapshot indication of how you tend to act at the moment. It tells you, for example, how prone you are to doubt. But how prone you are to doubt can depend on how difficult your current situation is, or how many struggles you're going through, or how stressed you are. And you cannot say that you are a stressed person, you are a stressed type, because you got the stress result on Big Five. You can only say that at the moment my neuroticism is this high and that's how it should be done. It should give you an indication of what you are experiencing right now or how you tend to act right now. But it should give you the option, the opportunity, the feeling that you can work on yourself, you can develop yourself, you can grow yourself. So I want to ask some questions and that question is, how can you build identity and what is a healthy way to understand your own self and your own identity? Why do you think 16 personalities is doing what it is doing? Why did it make these connections? What is the purpose of this website and why is it offered completely for free? What are they doing with all the data? What are they doing with all the research? Where does it go? Do they make money off it? Do they sell it to somebody and who? And why are we just blindly reading online content on personality psychology on something as important as our own identity, our own feelings, our own values, and just absorbing it blindly without self-criticism? Shouldn't we be more critical of the content that we consume online? Shouldn't we think more about why we do what we do? Shouldn't we be looking at personality from a more critical point of view? So to all of you coming from 16personalities.com to my web channel, I want to say start by reading about the cognitive function, start by exploring Carl Jung's archetypes, start by looking at uh, different channels like Harry Merle's cognitive personality theory and my own to really develop and understand how things really work. And 
Start looking at yourself more broadly. Develop a more dynamic self-concept. Learn to see yourself from multiple sides. Learn to understand that you're a different person in different situations. Self-conscious, becoming more, uh, developing a growth mindset and becoming a more happy and healthy person. Thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you guys in the next video.